So let's talk VGA. Elements of Computing Systems book talks about a virtual display that is Imagine these are straight lines, uh, 512 by 256. So we have 512 pixels and 256 lines. Okay. So, and in addition, uh, these uh, pixels are either on or off. Uh, the, the display that they describe is a black and white display. So no grayscale, no color. It's either on or it's off. So one bit per pixel, you can think of it that way. Uh, so let's just call this the active area. Let's, um, just for argument's sake, call all of this space around our active area. Well, let's let's just call this the inactive area. Because if if we call these, you know, in this active area, we'll call each one of these spots pixels, right? Well, the active area is also composed of pixels, even though you can't see them. And we're doing this really from a timing perspective, right? Because you know we're we're spewing these pixels out on our signal wires over some over some time frame, right? And so even though we're not displaying these pixels, these these quote you know these quote unquote pixels, you know, are, are occurring over time, which is really kind of the point of the exercise because you got timing involved in when these signals need to be coming on and off. Okay. So what, what is this area? So first of all, you know, you, you, you might imagine that, well, there's this, you know, there's this time that's, or there's these pixels that's occurring here. How many of those are there? Let's just call that max X. And uh, here, same thing. Let's just call this max Y. We don't know what the number is, but there must be a number, right? Um, and let's also call this little area here um, little a. And uh, let's call this area up here. Uh, we'll call that little b. And then likewise, there's an area over here. Um, let's see. We'll call it... Mm, I'm going to do it like this, and I'll explain why. C sub 1, C sub 2. And uh, really, this should be B sub 1 and B sub 2. And down here, we'll call this D. All right, so our inactive areas, let's divide them up in, in this way. And it'll become clearer why I'm doing that here in a second. But the point is, is that there's some number of lines right, that we're scanning that are not, you know, pixels that we should be displaying. And there's a certain number of pixels ahead of time and a certain number of pixels after time that are not part of the active area and we shouldn't be displaying. And then there's a certain number of lines at the end that are not displayable lines. So how do we come to what all these numbers are, are supposed to be and how fast are we actually having to spit these spit these things out. Well, that gets into a theoretical discussion of the VGA standard. Uh, I'm going to consider that to be out of scope of this discussion. It's not really important how you arrive at it because there's formulas uh, and uh, calculators that give you the numbers. 
Uh, I encourage you to go read up on it. If you really want to know more, there's a calculator. So um, in the comments on uh, the video, you're going to see a link to this calculator. You can go run this yourself. Um, what I did is I put, put in a 512 by 256 resolution. And so that, you know, corresponds to the resolution of our desired active area. And this refresh rate, which we'll come back here, come back to in, in, in a second. Um, so, um, one thing that we, that we need to know is how fast these pixels are being spit out, right? So on our FPGA, that really gets translated into a clock. How, f how fast does our clock need to be in order to be able to, you know, render all these pixels out? Well, um, that's, there's sort of the desired clock and then there's what you have. And in my case, uh, I have a, uh, you may have seen it on prior videos, a uh, Alcatree AU board. It has a 100 megahertz clock on it. And the Logisim application um, imposes a limit of 12 and a half megahertz because it's the, the clock rate divided by eight. Yeah, that's the fastest clock that you can get out of it. That's without overclocking or, or synthesized clocking, which um, again, I've made a, a prior video that talks about how to uh, synthesize a new faster clock, but I'm not going to go there for now. Let's just assume for a, for a moment that 12 and a half megahertz is the clock rate, the pixel rate of spitting these pixels out on our wire. Okay. So if we go down and we look at the first calculated value that it spits out for you, you can see here, and there's three columns here, these CVT columns. I'll come back to what those are in a second. But if we just look at the first CVT column, what we can see here is 12 and 12.5, and this is measured in megahertz. So we're going to define our pixel clock to be 12 and a half megahertz because that's what I've said that I have. Well, if you if you do run all the math here, uh, what you get is you get a refresh rate of 73 hertz, and what that really means is these lines are going to get refreshed to the screen. We're going to make 73 complete passes of this area every second. So 73 Hertz is, is the frequency that this, uh, you know, all of this area, 73 times a second is gonna be uh, how fast it's gonna run. And that yields, when the math is all done, that yields a clock rate of 12.5 megahertz. So essentially what I, what I did is I knew I needed 12 and a half megahertz. So, and I knew I needed a 512 by 50, by 256. So I played around with the refresh rate until the calculator gave me this clock rate, this pixel clock of 12 and a half megahertz. Okay, so now let's just talk about this, the, the notion of one horizontal line. What, is it, what does it look like to spit out one, one horizontal line? Um, so, so really there's, there's two um, signals that, that are involved, right? I mean, obviously number one, first signal is... Um, I guess I'm going to call it the pixel signal, right? Now, in, in, and that really defines this active area, right? Uh, signals, some, some sort of signal has to exist that shows you the state of what each one of these of, of pixels are. Now, in reality, the RGB standard has um, really three pixel signals, right? There's, a, there's an R, a G, and a B red, green, and blue. Now, in our case, uh, you know, we're only really defining uh, one pixel state, if you will, and that one pixel state is going to get fed to all three of these uh, signals on the VGA uh, interface, being it's going to be the same signal because uh, it's either going to be on or off. So there's actually no intermediate state between on and off for any of these. It's, you know, when, when our one pixel state is on, all three of these are going to be on. And when our one pixel state is off, all three of these are going to be off. Second signal that needs to exist is, well, when, when does this active area actually start? Like you need to tell the monitor needs to somehow know when 
you know, at what point in time are am, am I supposed to start looking at this this pixel stream to make a determination as to whether these things should be on or off? And that is defined by the horizontal sync signal. Right. So what on this mess defines the horizontal sync signal? Uh, and and what is it like out, out of out of how many pixels you know sh should it should it last? All right. Well, first of all, what what number of pixels are we talking about here? What is max x? So if you look at the little calculator here, you can see our h total under the CVT column is six forty. So. Let's write that up there. So that's so now we know max x, the maximum number of pixels that defines this whole thing is uh, 640. So 640 pixels per per line, whether they're pixels that we actually see or pixels that we don't see. Uh, so what is the number of lines? So if we scroll down here, um, and we we don't really need this right this minute, but let's just write it down. So we have V total of 275. Okay. So now we know 640 by 275, that's, you know, the total not total pixel area that we're dealing with here. Now, horizontal sync. How do we know when this, when a given line is supposed to start being recognized by the monitor? If we look down here, we can see um, active. Well, first of all, active, we already know what active is. It's 512, and that's what we defined up here. It's replaying it for you down here so that you see that you've got a total number of 640, but out of those, only 512 are considered active. So if you do the math, you know, you come to the conclusion that the number of blanking pixels, if you will, uh, in, in time are 128. So what that really is saying is that this, this space here, so C1 and C2 and A form 128 pixels worth of blanking. So, you know, we could actually write that down, you know, um, H blank is equal to C1 plus C2 plus a, right? So if we look down here, we see these three values, H front porch, H sink, and H back porch. The C1 signal is actually our horizontal sink. And that here is described as 48 pixels long. So let's just write that right there, 48 pixels, okay? Now, that leaves the front porch and the back porch. Now, I, I always get confused by this. I'm not sure why it, the standard describes it this way, but it does. So that's just this is just the way you have to remember it. It seems backwards to me. However, C2 is defined as the back porch. So A is defined as the front porch. So if we look at uh, the front porch, 16. So the front porch is here. That's A. And the back porch, C2, is 64. So this makes some sense, right? Uh, we have a horizontal sink that lasts some period of time described here, that where it, it changes state. And then once the state changes, that signifies the beginning of a pixel, of visible pixels. However, you cannot right away start the, you know, the uh, rendering of the pixels. There's a little bit of time that has to elapse in the definition of this, what's called the back porch, before your pixel signal can start writing things to the screen. And, and what that actually means is the pixel signal during this period of time has to be zero. It, ha it has to have no signal on it at all. And subsequent on this front porch, your pixel signal also has to be quiet 
for this amount of time as well. So we can write a few more formulas here just to kind of drive the point home. Uh, our h total is going to be equal to our active area uh, plus uh, our blanking area, or h blank. Right, in which case um, our h total of 640 should be equal to 512 plus h blank, but h blank is defined as 48 plus 64 plus 16, which um, if I do the math here, uh, 512 plus 48 plus 64 plus 16, 640, very well. Okay, so now we know how to start a line. Uh, how do we know when we want to start a frame, like the beginning of, of this point up here? Well, third signal then is the vertical sync signal, right? And in, in fact, the vertical sync signal is B1, right? Because it follows the same sort of logic as the horizontal sync signal, right? So B1 is the vertical sync, right? And the same idea applies, right? So we have this, this notion of a back porch, B2, and the notion of a front porch, D. Right again, it might seem backwards to you, but that's that's the way the standard defines it: uh, uh, back porch, front porch. So, what are those numbers? Um, here, here we go, and we know that our, our blanking duration total is is nineteen. Uh, ignore nine seventy three; that may be confusing. That's actually measuring microseconds, not lines. So, don't get confused by that. Uh, so, we see our front porch, our sink, and our back porch. So. Let's fill in these numbers. So our sink is defined as 10. So our B1, that's going to be 10. Our back porch, vertical back porch is 6. And our vertical front porch, D, is 3. So again, if we V blank is supposed to be B1 plus B2 plus T, which uh, should be 10 plus 6 plus 3, which should equal to 19. And that's what our calculator says. And then again, our V total should be equal to um, our active, our V active, I guess, plus V blank. And, uh, you know, V active is 256. And we just figured out what V blank was. That's 19, which should equal 275, 275. Matches up. So this should give you now a pretty good idea of what these signals m might look like. So, but let's, let's see if we can just draw them out, right? So let's take, uh, let's take the horizontal sync signal first, right? So um, we have 640 pixels, right? And at the very beginning, that's when, a, uh, that is uh, when, the state change should occur for the horizontal sync signal, right? Because that's what C1 is. Now, with signals, right, you got you can think of them two ways, high to low, low to high. Well, what, what is, when you're in the act of horizontal syncing, what state should you be in? If you look back on the calculator, it tells you. 
the horizontal sink polarity says uh, says negative for the CVT column. So, well, that's that's pretty easy. So let's let's just uh, call horizontal sink, and we have a one and a zero. And so when we start horizontal sinking, our signal is going to do that. And then it's going to go on a certain amount of time, right? C1. And then it's going to be off. And, and in fact, if we think of these in pixels, not uh, time, but because you know, it, it'll eventually get translated in that, but this signal has to be off 48 pixels, and it actually needs to be on the rest of the duration, if we do the math again, should be uh, 640 minus 48, should be off uh, 500 and... 92 pixels. Okay, so let's just draw the pixel signal. What what should that look like? Well, we know that it can't be on during the sync signal, right? Because the sync signal is what's defining the beginning of one of the lines. So uh, we know that uh, we can't be doing anything 48 pixels. This is one and this is zero. And we also know that for 64 pixels, and again, this is not to scale, uh, not to scale, unfortunately, but okay. We can't be doing anything for 64 pixels either. At that, after that point in time, all of our pixel traffic can occur, right? So you know, we can be doing, you know, all this, all this stuff, you know, eh, 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 you know, all, basically all of our pixel traffic can occur and that can occur 512 pixels worth, right? So imagine if you will, all that stuff is going on at the end of 512 pixels, right? The state has to go down, back down to zero. And it has to stay down at zero for 16 pixels. So what does our vertical signal look like? Okay, well, again, if we think of signaling, and uh, there can be positive, negative, negative, positive. Well, for vertical sync signal, is it negative? Well, you know, is it negative going, I should say? Uh, well, not necessarily. Um, Again, if we if we look at if we look at this again in our CVT column, the vertical sync polarity is positive, so it's opposite of the horizontal sync signal. Um, so if we just uh, say vertical sync here, uh, what we then we have to say is that at the start of a new frame, um, we need to be going from negative to positive, right? Because it's a positive, it's a positive going sync signal when you are v-syncing into indicating the beginning of a new frame, and that. V-sync signal is supposed to last 10 pixels. Uh, and I, I said pixels, I, I actually mean lines because we're, you know, we're, we're dealing in the, in this direction, we're talking about the number of lines. If I say that when I'm talking vertical, you know what I mean? I'm going to try. It's easier to think of it as, you know, 512 pixels by 275 pixels, but 275 is actually the number of lines. Anyway, uh, so um, uh, 10, 10 lines signifies the duration of the vertical sync signal. Um, also before 
the horizontal sinking can occur, there has to be another six lines of silence signified here by the back porch, the vertical, the, the vertical back porch. So another, so this 10, 10 lines signifies the end of the vertical sink, right? Um, at which point the vertical sink signal is kind of done, right? It, it's, it stays low until it occurs again. And we'll talk about when it occurs again in a second. But this set of signals can't begin until another six lines have elapsed, right? Because that's the vertical sink back, back porch. And then, so after this occurs, then this business can occur in this, in this duration. You get to this point, and that duration has to be three, three lines. All right. Now, of course, we know this better be 256, right? There's 256 lines that are being spewed out in this period of time. Um, if we add 256, 6, 10, and 3, which we did, right? 256, 6, 10, and 3, total of 275, right? So this, this total here is 275 pixels worth of time. We can translate these into time now because uh, we know from the calculator that the pixel clock is 12.5 uh, megahertz. So uh, if we just take the reciprocal, so if we said 1 over 12,500,000, right? So 1 divided by... So each one of those pixels, I'm not going to write it down, but you can see each one of those pixels occurs in that amount of time in seconds. If you, you know, if you use that math, you could come to how long it takes to, to run, uh, to run a line. And let's, let's just do that. So the amount of time it takes for a line to be completely rendered, including all of the inactive and active areas would be this number times 640 useful to cross check these to cross check that number because if you look here um ah here we go so we have h frequency right so this is the amount of time for one uh but our frequent um how many how many times a second can we do that so again if we take the reciprocal of this um is there a one over Let's do it this way. Yeah, there should be. Yeah, there's a one over here. So 19.531. Does that court? Yeah, see, it corresponds. 19.531. This is measured in kilohertz. This is in hertz. So, yeah, so that, you know, that math is all making sense with the calculator. And if we look again down on our calculator, we can see horizontal period. So, for for one, uh, you know, one scan of this, how long does it take? Uh, it takes. It's saying fifty two micro fifty two point two, or sorry, fifty one point two microseconds, and our calculation. So oh oh oh, so one two three four five six. That's right, fifty one point two microseconds because it's six zeros for microseconds. So yeah, the calculations all seem to make sense. So now armed with this information, what are we going to do? Well, I'm going to, going to outline for you how I want to design uh, a uh, set of circuits in Logisim to produce our VGA display. So, uh, and, and this idea uh, I got from um, 
series of videos from uh, the site Nanland. And again, I'm going to uh, reference the um, description to the site in the in the comments. And so you can look at uh, the gentleman that produced those videos. They're very good. Uh, but he broke uh, the uh, his, his video circuitry up into sort of this way. And I sort of borrowed, if you will, his designs. I think it's a good way to think of it. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to produce a sync pulse generator. All right. So our sync pulse generator uh, is essentially going to take a clock. So it's going to take the clock. It's going to take the uh, number of total uh, horizontal pixels, number of vertical lines, and then the um, the uh, horizontal sync pulse count and the vertical sync pulse count. And it's going to output the horizontal sync and the vertical sync. And then the second thing that we're going to produce uh, is, uh, well, you know, we need, we need some pixels, right? So let's just call it a... Um, um, let's call it a test, test pattern generator. Because what I want to have happen is, you know, instead of just turning all the pixels on or turning all the pixels off or whatever, I want, you know, I want several different, um, results to be selectable. So, you know, maybe, maybe I want one result to be all on, maybe, you know, two, I want all off. And maybe I want some, you know, horizontal bars and some vertical bars and maybe a checker. You know, something like that. So we can flip it and kind of see that all our you know, all of our borders look right and 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 so forth. So test pattern generator is going to generate the, the bit stream, if you will, the signal of the bits indicating whether um, a bit should be uh, you know, on or on or off. And, and of course it's going to need the, uh, it's going to need the, the active, uh, horizontal pixel count and the vertical, uh, line count. And it's gonna, it's going to output uh, you know, a uh, pixel, whether it should be should, should be high or low, and uh, you know we're going to need to know what column index and what row index we happen to be on for this current pixel, and then finally uh, we're going to need a. I'm going to call a porch generator. And so the porch generator, you know, the sync pulses by themselves uh, don't really give an indication as to when the, or, or it gives an indication as to when one of the porches begin, but it doesn't give any indication as to how long they're supposed to last. Um, and so we need the test pattern generator to have some knowledge of when it's supposed to begin its activity because uh, only after the sync pulse is done and after the uh, back porch is over uh, should the test you know pattern be um, spewed out and so that's going to be the job of the porch generator is to basically um, give an indication of, of where we are in the clock sequence to know whether uh, these porches are are beginning um, or ending. And so, you know, for example, in order to do that, uh, we're going to need to know on the input, 
you know, we're going to need the sync pulses. So we're going to need the uh, H sync and the V sync, right? Because we need to know when those are done because that's when the, uh, the back porch starts. And we also need to know the um, front and back porch durations for um, both uh, horizontal and vertical. And then, you know, we're at least going to need something coming out of the porch generator that says whether or not we're in the active region or not, right? So once the porch has passed, once the back porch has passed, then obviously we're now in the active region for the line. And so then the sync pulse generator needs a signal to say, okay, go ahead and start um, doing, doing your business. So given this sort of general outline... Uh, let's start with a series of videos uh, to actually implement these in Logisim, and we will use the sync pulse generator as the first step.